This is the 11th video in a big 12 part series all about mapping out melodic arpeggio guitar shapes on the guitar, mainly so we can improvise over chord changes and know exactly what the notes are in any chord that comes up and, and just nail the changes and follow the harmony. But also this is great for just straight up technique practice, for just theory knowledge and mapping out the fretboard, for ear training, for composing melodies, all of this stuff. Every video in this series features a different chord type doing the five different shapes, five different positions of the arpeggios and chord tone shapes for each of those chords. This is the second to last in this series and it's dominant seven sharp five. This is also called augmented seventh. It's a seventh chord, dominant seventh chord that is also augmented, an augmented triad with a flat seven. So we're gonna go through and map all of that out. I have a free download with all of the diagrams from this lesson and all the lessons in this series. You can get it with the link in the top of the description. It's my chord tone vocabulary pack. It shows all of the melodic arpeggio guitar shapes that we need to know to improvise over practically any chord progression. Also in the description, there is a link to a playlist that has all the videos in this whole series. In this video, I'm gonna go through and just demonstrate up and down how I want you to be able to play the five shapes the five arpeggio shapes of this augmented seventh chord, this dominant seven sharp five chord. Then I'm gonna go through and recommend exactly what fingerings you should use to be able to do that. And lastly, we're gonna go through each of the five arpeggio shapes on this chord and just improvise with them in the different positions to make sure we're comfortable with that. That's the first step we wanna do to get towards that freedom of being able to hit those chord tones when that chord actually comes up in real music. Now, getting to that point is really hard, but we need to do this first. So in the future, I'll talk about certainly how to practice switching between chords when it's happening in music, and it's way harder to do that, but we have to have this down first. That's why I'm doing this whole series. So let's get into this chord, dominant seven sharp five, or also called augmented seventh. <laughs> I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics, tons of lessons on this channel, all designed to help us gain more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. All right, so this is one of those chords that is so often just skated over, kind of glossed over, not targeted, not totally nailed when improvising over chord changes, and it just is an amazing feeling to know exactly where we are with the chord tones of this chord, dominant seven sharp five, and just totally nail it when it comes through in a chord progression. And the beginning steps of being able to do that is to sound great, feel good about just improvising over statically the chord by itself. We're gonna target and uh, outline the chord tones meticulously with this five-step process that I have. We're gonna do that with each of the positions, each of the arpeggio shapes. I didn't really work on this chord for a long time in, in a deep and thorough way, and once I did, it made just an amazing difference in feeling good about working through chord progressions and playing over actual tunes. So, first thing we're gonna do, like we do with every chord type in this whole series, and if you haven't watched any of the other videos from this series, check out any of them, depending on the chord type you're interested in playing over. The process is the same for all of these, but I talk a lot about um, phrasing in different ways, and there's little nuggets of different information throughout each of them. Uh, so if you wanna improvise really confidently over any chord, check out as many of them as you can. But the first step always is doing a root to root outline, where we start on the lowest root get to the next root and repeat it, play up the rest and back down, and pause and repeat on each root. Play everything else around. Don't pause or repeat on any other note. That's so we can get all the chord tones and feel really good about the anchoring our sound and our feel on the root itself and know where they are. Okay, so this shape is so awkward and this chord is so awkward, the structure of it. That's one of the reasons why we avoid it a lot of times. It's not from a normal major scale and it's just kind of confusing. Like how should we map this out? What are the actual shapes of it? It's not obvious to us. Well, these shapes that I'm showing you here, they all come from, they all fit inside of either a whole tone scale or, or an altered scale. Thank you. 
and I just did a two-part s- series about the Altered Scale recently. I'll put a link to that in the description if you're interested in Altered Scale, definitely check that out. But that's why the layout of each shape is the way it is. Little side note, if the root, if you're playing the root with your first finger on any of the arpeggio shapes in this lesson, in any of the arpeggio shapes of this chord type, in the way that I play it and teach it, then your major third is going to be on that same string. That's a good little tip to help us get oriented and know where we are. So we're going to play again one more time. Get used to that. And then the second step that I always like to do is some kind of way of breaking up the arpeggio form, the chord tones with a melodic pattern. And I've been doing this one. This is one I recommend for all of these. And that is just to go start on a chord tone, go up to the next chord tone and back down and do that from each one. Do that from the lowest note up all the way back down and kind of just end it however. It's going to feel weird. I, let, I sometimes go back to the root because now my my ears want to hear the root and that's a good sign that means we're we're grounding ourselves in the harmony um so that is the second thing i recommend doing and after that it's important to just be able to play constant quarter notes just all over the place try not to go just only up and down you can go up and down we're reviewing it but kind of go back and forth a little bit skip around a little bit you'll find little structures like this structure is very cool And try to just keep it going get all those notes out of your system and just prove to yourself that you see the map of the chord tones that well that you can just go for it doesn't need to be fast but if it's you know however fast you can do it is what you then have ava- available to you when you're actually improvising after that you want to try to just do something with phrasing and musicality <laughs> something that's just chord tones only as limiting as that is we need to find something that feels good musically in there if we can't more notes are not going to help us uh, sound better or feel better about our playing so but uh, yes it's limiting but there should be some creativity in there that we can find kind of adding that little uh, approach note we'll do more of that in a second So more space, more repetition, that kind of thing. Coming back to the root a lot, if that's helpful for you to to feel like you can conclude a phrase that way. Once you kind of play around with that, then we're going to start exploring adding other notes. We need to know the chord tones so crazy well that then when we add other notes and explore just how other notes might sound around it, we're not going to get lost. You can try anything. try anything and you can land back on your feet by just going back to chord tones anytime so one thing that's nice about this because it comes from the whole tone scale as well as the altered scale but it comes from the whole tone scale well you can add a whole step below or above any of the chord tone notes and you're just kind of playing the whole tone scale that's kind of what i recommend for this chord type and then once you do that you can just start adding passing tones between the whole steps so if you got those Okay, so I like to have kind of a backing track on this so we can really hear how the extra notes sound. There's no bad notes. There's just placing them in rhythmic spots that feels like it works or not. So if you don't like something, don't say, ooh, that's a bad note. Say, how can I place that differently to use it in a way that doesn't feel off? You can try anything and then go back to chord tones whenever. Okay. 
So that is the process. Those, those are the five steps. We're going to walk through them much quicker now on in the other four shapes that we want to do. Here's the root of the next position up, the next shape of C, dominant seven sharp five. <laughs> Okay, I like to do third finger here and then shift over to fifth position and then reach and kind of hop over with your pinky and then roll the pinky. Then you're just in sixth position here. Then shift back over to first finger and then third finger. So you're kind of most, you're really in sixth position the whole time and your first finger just reaches over for this C note, this root on the fifth fret there. Okay, so yeah, that pinky roll is kind of tricky, but I do still like doing it that way. Okay, then we're gonna do our melodic pattern. Okay, then we wanna just be able to play constant improv. To, if I'm going fast, the challenge is just kind of can I keep it going and it feels kind of intense and then slower I like to explore with can I just see it so clearly that I'm jumping around all over the place. Okay, so once you do that, try to do something musical with it. It's usually about the rhythm, especially with such a nebulous sounding chord. <laughs> kind of coming back to the root a lot or, you know, whatever sounds good to you, just really explore with that. It forces you to think of phrasing for a sec. And then lastly, try to get some kind of backing track. Use anything you want to get that sound. Behind you, I'm just using a little loop that I made, doing like, just two voicings of the chord. Uh, back and forth, use iReal Pro, use Band in a Box, use YouTube uh, jam tracks, whatever. Use just a drone note. And then we're gonna play with this. Those whole steps. And anything works. So I could use that note if I place it in the right way. <laughs> So I'm kind of enjoying this little box area right here. Just exploring. And what you like or don't like is going to change over time, and you're going to find things that work. And you know, we're, it's really a lifetime of a, of of exploring. After that, that fifth step is just your you being the artist and just one note at a time, ex playing with flavor. You, you're a chef. You're adding flavors. You're tasting things, and you just know that any time you want, you can land on your feet by going back to chord tones. And if you don't see the chord tones super clearly when you go outside of the chord tones, then that just means you need to map them out more and keep doing those other four steps. Let's go on to the next position. First finger on C here for C7 sharp five. If your first finger is playing the root, then the third is on that same string. So that's kind of a nice to remember. Okay, I'll do that one more time. Okay, then our melodic pattern. Okay, uh, then we want to just play constant improv. Chord tones only at this point. You can use a backing track for this part too, but you're going to be hearing the quality of the harmony of this one chord really clearly just by outlining the chord like this. It's great for your ears that you're hearing yourself play this sound. Very unsettling kind of sound, it can be. But you'll get used to it, of course. 
Okay, so once you're doing that, once you feel good about that, then try to do something that's that is phrasing and musical. Um, I really keep coming back to this, these three notes that are a whole step apart, whole steps apart. Because you can do something very melodic with that. So that's just kind of where I, I kind of gravitate towards, but um, you'll obviously do more phrasing and stuff as you're really playing, but that's, that's to make us do that before we go into adding a bunch of extra notes. And I'm always kind of trying to work on phrasing anyway, but I'm, I'm always aware of what am I working on right now? Do I want to try to get more melodic with it or do I need to kind of just map out some options for what will sound good? So there's that altered scale. And I can go all throughout that scale or anywhere I want. But because I know the chord tones so well, I can always just land and rest. Okay, you get the idea. Let's do the other positions. Okay, here's the next position. First finger on the fourth string, so the third is on that same string. That's that root to root one more time. Okay, then the melodic pattern from the lowest note. I kind of like to just go back and land on the root. Okay, then we're just going to improvise constant notes. I'll go ahead and use the... the uh, backing track for this. Okay, once you got that, then try to do something that has some phrasing to it. to do a lot of that repetition and end differently, uh, end in one place and then end, do the same idea and end somewhere else, end on the root at the end, and then start adding notes. Don't be afraid to hear something you don't like. that step let's do the last position here's the last arpeggio shape for dominant seven sharp five okay okay that's that first step then the melodic pattern root is here with the first finger so the third is on that same string that's that little tip that we were doing before okay now we're gonna just play constant obviously you can move these around to whatever root you want we're just doing them all off C and if you map it out this well and then you plug it into a song it still takes a lot of work to change the context your perspective as you're going playing through chord progressions but you'll have if you can sound good on it just on one kind of loop of a chord, that's the first step to the sounding great on it when it comes up in a progression, just nailing it. Okay, so you're gonna play constant notes and then try to do something that it just has your own kind of phrasing to it. Again, I'm doing a lot of that repeating, just kind of going for something. What's fun about that is that whatever you do, you're kind of, you said something and you're stuck with it. It's really like having a train of thought when you're speaking. If you start talking to a group of people, 
when we have something's going to kick in where you're like, oh, I better make sense. I better say something next that relates to what I just said. If you just play, say a bunch of unrelated things, people are going to wonder if you're okay. And so in music, think of it that same way, right? You start saying something, even if you don't like it, you said it already. Okay, you better recover from that by um, saying something related next and related to that and make some kind of conclusion before changing the topic. And changing a topic is great, right? In conversation, we do that, but we don't do it in uncomfortable, um, inappropriate places. We finish our thoughts and then we switch, right? So uh, I love that about this, that you could start like, I did this thing, I didn't like it, but I'm like, okay, I'm committed now. I have to kind of keep going with that, repeat it, end, you know, end that thought somewhere and then keep going uh, with maybe something that I like better. But that's what's fun about just, you don't even have to preconceive anything. Just start playing and then react to your own playing. So that's that phrasing thing. And then we are going to try to add notes around. That's that altered scale thing. There's that little box thing that I was enjoying over here. So I'm finding my own vocabulary, right? I'm finding my own sound. Like, I really like that. So if I find myself there in real music, ooh, I get to use that then. And that's going to be just a pleasure to do that. And this is how we find our own sound. We're not, I'm not just, like, playing licks from someone else's playing. I'm really exploring around all the notes of the chord. And then notes around them and just landing safely anytime I want back on the chord tone. So that's the formula. So what we've been doing in this whole series with all these chords and I just like to be thorough and meticulous and and uh, I don't know if it's a good idea to have done just 12 videos in a row with the same kind of formula on different chord types but I think it is the this is what I would do in private lessons with someone in a workshop in a group set whatever to say hey if you really want this result if you really want to play over all these chords this is what it takes and and I don't just want to say hey do these five things over any chord because I know it's not as simple as that so I want to walk through and show every step of the way all five steps over all five arpeggio shapes and I also don't like to say do something without demonstrating it and uh, for me that's enjoyable because I just want to play and I want to do it and I want more practice too and then I get to talk talk about it and then I think the best moments are the little kind of side notes along the way we're doing all these steps but it's those kind of little bits of musical advice and and reminders for myself too as we're going through these things that I think are the most grounding for our musicianship and we're we're all in this together. So I really feel like we're kind of just sitting through this and walking through this and practicing this together. And that's why I like having this series of these big stretches of these videos, just walking through all these things. So if it's one of your goals to be able to do this, I certainly hope it's it's valuable. Definitely get my core tone vocabulary pack, all of the melodic arpeggio guitar shapes from this whole series, just the diagrams that you can have in front of you to practice. There's a link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones to get that. Hit that like button, please. If you liked this lesson, that helps out the channel. It helps out the video. It helps other people who want to learn this stuff find the lesson. So I appreciate that. I have a new lesson every week. Next week, we're going to do the final lesson in this whole 12 part series. We're going to do dominant seven flat five. So we're going to do same process through. And these are really tricky chords. This one we did today and the one we're going to do next week. These ones are really tricky. If you can have these down, you're going to be just a step above a lot of improvisers. They take a while to get down, but if you like the sound of them and if they're going to come up in chord progressions that you might be improvising over, it's worth putting the time into it. And I just love cracking the code on these things and just practicing them. That's why I want to walk you through it with all of these videos. So that will be next week, dominant seven flat five. Also, that's the shape I use just over altered chords. We're going to talk about that next time. Looking forward to it. See you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.